If I can come to the term social conservatism, can I ask you how you would describe that and why you see it as good for society, particularly in the context of the, the line, I've always thought it was a bit of a home goal with people in the conservative country movement in this country saying, we're seen as the nasty party. And the minute you say, we're seen that way, you're, you've allowed others to define you and you're owning it, it seems to me. But that's an aside. Social conservatism and why it's good for, for society. Well, I think it's an important aside. I never thought the Conservative Party was the nasty party. I remember that speech made um, by Theresa May very well because the next day I was speaking to a Conservative group and it was uh, in Shropshire, the Conservative Women's Group. And there you had all these people who had worked for years for the Conservative Party who also did all the charitable work in their local communities. You know, they ran the village fete, all those sorts of things. And suddenly they'd been told they were nasty. So I thought it was wrong, foolish thing to say, um, and misunderstood what conservatism was about. Again, back to my point on the family being the building block of society rather than the other way around, and therefore of the of the state. The conservatives ought to support the family because it helps individuals in their lives. The success of people who are brought up in a stable family is statistically better than those who are not brought up in a stable family. But, and the but is very important, it's not for politicians to be judgmental on how others lead their lives, but it is for politicians to allow people the freedom to lead their lives. What we have currently in the UK, and I don't know if this is also true in Australia, is a benefit and tax system that is actively hostile to the family. You are worse off in a family than not in a family. This can't be sensible. So I don't want to go back to a time where you stigmatize people living in other groupings or make their life more difficult um, or, or make it harder for single parent families who have a pretty tough time for all sorts of reasons. I don't want to penalize or pillory them, but I do want to support the traditional family because I think it's helpful for society overall. Uh, and I suspect is, is important in terms of economic outcomes ultimately. Well, I think that's absolutely right, that, that if, you, if you look at um, success at school, if you look at the prison population, uh, and you correlate that with um, children in care, it's a particularly difficult picture. If you correlate it with broken homes altogether, it is a difficult picture. So the stability uh, that you get from being in a traditional family is very helpful to people growing up and to their families. Uh, as I say, this doesn't mean you want to criticize people whose lives haven't worked out that way or have made other choices. They must be free to do that. But you don't want to have policies that actually make family life harder. We do seem to be living in an age of um, sort of quite radical self-autonomy, you know. Um, the idea that somehow the greatest virtue is that I am who I feel almost, that I am. And that sometimes I think creates awkward dynamics uh, in that that set of virtues is not particularly friendly to community, including family. It can be a bit anarchic, anarchic a bit, uh, you know, uh, anti-organised government and, and, and stability, uh, and certainly anti-religion. So you've got a bit of a clash there with this modern idea, I think, of the virtue of self-autonomy and what we've seen as the essential ingredients of a cohesive and cooperative society. Well, people can identify as they wish. They're completely free to do it. But am I obliged to accept how they identify? There was in the papers recently that somebody had come to the United Kingdom from America and had identified as being British. Well, that doesn't entitle him to a passport. Uh, and he may think he's British. Marvellous. I'm more in favour of people thinking that <laughs> British great thing. But that doesn't entitle you to the rights of a British citizen. It doesn't give you a vote. It doesn't give you a passport. It doesn't give you a national insurance number. And uh, so I think people are entitled to say what they wish. It's a free country. But equally, others are entitled not to change their behaviour in accordance with somebody's whim. This has been the genius, I think, of Western uh, civilization over the last few hundred years. We've evolved to the point, until it seems recently, 
that we were able to accommodate one another's deepest differences in a way that's been quite unique. Uh, and one worries a little that it's under attack. Yes, I, I mean, I think there is an intolerance. Um, and the intolerance mainly comes from the left, not from the right. Uh, I, I see this uh, on, uh, I do a television program for GB News. I see this with some people that I interview, that people on the right who I disagree with uh, don't automatically think that I'm a bad person because of it. Some people on the left just assume if you disagree, you must be bad. And the right very rarely feels that towards the left. This is a... Intolerance is a bad thing. It's bad for the cohesion of society. But it's also a desperate arrogance because if you look at human history, you go back all through whatever records there are, we make terrible mistakes. We all believe things which then turn out a hundred years later to have been wrong, unpleasant, false, based on bad information. And therefore one ought to have a certain humility about one's own views and certainties.